Hello, Wilmington. I am Justin Wright, your Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Wilmington, offering a new generation of leadership where we will put neighbor back in neighborhood. We will restore the public trust. We will bridge the gap from city hall to your front door. I need your help. I need your vote. I need your support. Justin Wright, your Democratic candidate for mayor of the city of Wilmington. We are Wilmington. Hi, this is Dr. Curry, pastor of the Ezion Fair Baptist Church here in Wilmington, Delaware, Wilmington's most exciting church. Thank you so very much for taking time to tune in today, and I hope and trust that you enjoy the show. This show is designed to ensure that we are well balanced as believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We make sure that you get the spiritual as well as the political as well as the natural. We're going to be doing some amazing things and today we have some amazing people to interview and I hope that you will enjoy the show. I also hope that you have an opportunity to go grab your cup of coffee as we have a cup of coffee with Dr. Curry. Stay tuned and let's get after it. Well, we're back and listen, we are amazed and we are very excited to have our county exec to be with us on this day, having a cup of coffee with Dr. Curry. Uh, Matt Myers have been a friend to Ezion and Fair family for a very, very long time. Since going into the position, he has certainly proven himself, showing up to our events, even showing up to worship when it's not time for elect election season. So I thought as I was driving up the road just a few minutes, just a few weeks ago, that while we're having this new uh, cup of coffee with Dr. Curry, who would be a great op person to be able to, to, to interview and to talk to, and, and you came right up in my spirit, let's call Matt, and I called you and immediately you made it happen, and we appreciate you so very Thank much. Thank you, Dr. Curry. I want to also let you sh know that we are, um, we have beyond our 3,000 plus members that we have, this will be seen by many, and 90% of our membership is, is, is a part of the Newcastle County um, Electric, but that's really not your purpose for being here today because you have been a friend all the time of your, your leadership, and we thank you so very much. Matt, tell me, as we are preparing now to get into this time of coffee, uh, what do you feel some of, the some of the successes that you may have had while serving as our county executive? Well, first of all, thank you, Dr. Curry, and thank you to the Ezion Fair family for welcoming me to the couch today to have some coffee. I really <laughs> put coffee on you. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I, I also want to say thank you. You mentioned me coming to church even when it's not election time. Yes. We need spiritual guidance all the time, yes. not just during election time. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only our business relationship, right, but I appreciate the spiritual guidance you've given me mm -hmm. when I've walked in these doors and, and sat outside of the ceremony op opening the Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so thank you mm -hmm. for everything that you're doing for the county uh, community and for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, it was important to me. I was elected to my first office four years ago. I knew he's I am fair because, of course, I taught sixth and seventh grade math at Prestige Academy. So oh, I had quite okay. a few students and families that it, it, it attended e Zion Fair. It was really important to me uh, after I was elected that I appointed a senior staff that was reflective of our community. It was also important to me I get really, really good people, the best people, to serve in the county. And it just so ha we ran a competition. And normally when you get elected, you pick uh, people you know. Right. right to surround yourself i actually of the 22 people i hired i only knew one of them before i was elected county wow. executive and so that produced an incredibly diverse uh, and very well qualified group of people we appointed the first african-american woman ever to be the chief administrative officer of newcastle County. that's uh, the most senior appointed official of any local government in the state of delaware we appointed the first black chief of police uh mm. the the uh, second largest police department in the state, the first African-American woman to head economic development, all sorts, really a diverse range of people. And that's produced outcomes that's really great for all communities of the county. We, we looked at things like our summer youth employment program, which I know at times is a political football, hundreds of summer jobs for high school kids. And we said, how can we make this an extraordinary transformative experience for kids? We brought 25 kids to the Route 9 library last summer, back when libraries were open. Right. And, uh, and we taught them how to code. By the end of the summer, kids who really didn't have any experience using a computer, they said they knew how to use their phone, but we taught them how to code. So by the end of the summer, they were coding and making money for it. Mm. Transformative things that we've been doing under the radar that we're very proud of. 
You know, I, and thank you so much because you, your last comments were so real. Uh, there are people who are big on propaganda. They like to sh be showy. But Matt, what, one of the things that I do appreciate about you is that you really try to help you do try to, to be a part of it. And, and, and one of the things I didn't know about you is that you were a school teacher. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you and I share that background. Um, but I, I just think that this is just phenomenal, some of the things that you've done in the community, some of the things, some of the accomplishments that you've been able to make, and also to show that Black Lives Matter even before it became popular. Right. All of those things uh, are, are very important to us. You know, Matt, there's, during this era of COVID, we can't have church uh, inside the sanctuary. We're having it certainly outside. We, we, we have to do everything by um, live stream or telecast or Facebook. But what are some incentives that maybe your office is doing as it relates to the COVID-19? So it's very interesting, as was true for you, for this community across our county, COVID-19 hits in mid-March and suddenly all the things we were talking about, for example, instead of 25 uh, students coming to Route 9 Library, this summer we were trying to do more than 100. Mm -hmm. Suddenly in mid-March, all that was put on hold because our libraries were closed. And then the number one thing we were trying to figure out is how do we make sure we keep this virus from coming into our communities? Once it's in our communities, how do we just do anything we can to keep all communities safe if you heard me talk march 14th march 15th you would have heard me say you know this is a virus that doesn't know color it doesn't know religion it doesn't know nationality right. it's attacking us all together but in fact what we found is the virus exacerbates inequalities yes and we've had problems for generations here not just of criminal injustice mm -hmm. not just of housing injustice not just of educational opportunity injustice but of health injustice mm -hmm. and what we're seeing now in the numbers of deaths the number of people getting the virus unfortunately people of color communities of color are being devastated at such a higher rate yeah than uh, other communities. And so what we did is we said, everybody needs to get tested with a focus on communities of color. You might remember five, six months ago, there were no tests anywhere. Yeah. Nobody had tests, but the NBA players had tests, right? Yeah. Wealthier folk mm -hmm. had tests. Mm -hmm. And so we went on a mission to make sure that we used every dollar we had to make sure that anyone could get tested. That was sort of step one. And step two was how do we put these testing sites in communities where people can walk, mm. people that don't have access to a car, right. people that don't have the resources to go to a Walgreens and buy it or go to their doctor or go to Christiana. How do we make sure we're reaching them? And that's really what we've been working on. We've tested nearly 50,000 right. people now. Wow. If you haven't already, go to nccde.org slash COVID-19, nccde.org slash COVID-19. We're running 10 sites a week. I promise you, I promise you nothing up your nose that's bad politics <laughs> only it's a s simple oral saliva test I don't know if you've done it it's painless it's quick you get results within 72 hours and yes I did uh, have an opportunity to take one of those tests as well and and because I believe that I constantly get myself tested given the fact that I'm working with children and I'm here and I don't want to take anything home to my wife mm -hmm. and I'm spending a lot of time in different places but thank you so very much for that and I wanted and, I, and I'm, I'm very hot, proud of that but there's also um, something going on with I think it was dealing with the uh, bio uh, bot uh, program right uh, tell me a little bit about that so I told our staff uh, on March 13th you know I spent a year as a diplomat in Iraq embedded yeah. with the US Army in Mosul and one thing I learned uh, in on an army base an American army base in Iraq during wartime is there's so much uncertainty and these generals I work with and diplomats I work with and USAID officials and Iraqi officials had to make very quick decisions with limited information, mm -hmm. very quick decisions with limited information that would often determine who would live and who would die. Mm -hmm. That was the reality in war. And I learned from that that very often you need to make very quick decisions, but it's very important in a crisis to do whatever you can, look wherever you can to get whatever information you can mm -hmm. to make smarter decisions. Uh, thanks to the great work of individuals in our sewer department, we found a, a company started by a couple women uh, who graduated from MIT up outside Boston, and they were monitoring sewage to identify where uh, the virus is. You know, as we know, testing has been limited. We can't test everyone every day. Right. Uh, but when we test the sewage, we're getting a good view of where the virus is. And so you can go to biobot.nccde.org, biobot.nccde.org, 
and see the information that we've learned by monitoring our sewage. It's another way that we're just trying to be a little bit smarter, mm -hmm. a little bit quicker mm -hmm. in serving you to keep communities safe. Wow, this is just awesome, um, and I and we're appreciative. We are appreciative because if we're going to deal with the disparity, disparities, we have to make sure that we are looking in those communities. And this is just a creative way. When I staff gave me that information, I was like, "Wow, this is just phenomenal." Yeah. And we are appreciative to that. And and I want to say uh, to to you, Matt, thank you, thank you so very much. And 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 I I also want to know, what do you plan to do? the next four years. But do you have any plans for us for the next four years? We have a whole lot of plans. Uh, the, f the first thing is, you know, six months ago, the job situation here was pretty good. It wasn't perfect for everyone, mm -hmm. but it was pretty good. Uh, we're looking right now at not only the 100 year pandemic, right? The, the worst pandemic to hit America since 1918. We're also seeing really the worst economic crisis th since the 1930s. Mm -hmm. Unemployment rates in the county are, are um, above 10%, mm -hmm. right? Incredibly high. And we're also looking at a, kind of a good thing, I think, the seeds of a civil rights movement, like you talk about, Black Lives Matter, and potentially something transformative mm -hmm. in American society that will make our future so much brighter mm -hmm than our past. So we're looking very closely at those three things. Number one, how do we work tirelessly to make sure that in the coming weeks or months we can eradicate mm -hmm. this virus mm -hmm. from our community, number one. Number two, how do we make sure that we, all of us, not just our county government, mm -hmm. but individual communities like mm -hmm. the Ezion Fair community are protecting the most vulnerable? How do we find those who are shut out, who are unable to pay their rent, right? Who have, when we say shelter at home, they don't have a home That's to right. go to. When we say call your doctor if you have these sy symptoms. They don't have a doctor to call or money to spend. How do we make sure we protect those uh, people? And the third is to bring jobs back mm -hmm. to the county, to use, utilize our land use process, to utilize collaborations with, with your church, mm -hmm. to make sure that people who are really struggling, who maybe weren't struggling so much six months ago, who are suddenly finding it difficult to make ends meet, that we're creating jobs for them. Amen. I think that's just awesome. I just want to share with those of you who are are watching today that I am um, moved constantly. Uh, you all know me. I'm very transparent. I'm not a politician. I don't know how to be one because if I was a politician, maybe I would have made some bad decisions. I'm not calling you a politician. <laughs> I call you a public servant. <laughs> uh, but um, four years ago when Matt Myers was running for the office, everyone knows I did not support him uh, because I had another friend who was in this position. And um, I felt that uh, that person had certainly done us well as well. And I, I didn't know anything about Matt. I, di I di didn't know. But one of the things that Matt said to me, and I want to recapitulate it to you all, is that he said, if you give me a chance, I'll show you that it won't be about fanfare. It will be about reality, and I will work hard. And even though I did not vote for him, <laughs> um, I, 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 he did win. And when he won, he did prove that I can be the county exec for all people. I've had some people who I did not support, and they have treated us horribly. They have, they have tried to find everything in their power to stop us and block us, not Matt. Matt has been here, he was here for our opening, he has come to church several weeks, and I'm very grateful for that. And I wanted to share that that was not a part of my interview, Matt, but I wanted to give the testimony that you, you, you know I didn't support you in the front end but I am now supporting you. And then because you've given us money and things of that nature, but you've delivered on your word. The people of Southbridge, the people of Wilmington is where my heart is. And I wanna make sure whoever is representing in the county office, the city office, or whatever offices that are, that, that, that are, are reflective of those communities, that, that they are lifted up and, and we see them for who they are. There are a lot of people who will come along and will promise us everything but you said these words that give me a chance and I will prove that I am not going to just be the county exec for a certain segment and you've proven it. And I love these four years, the opportunity to lead in a way that brings all people together regardless of our differences. I've seen things in Iraq. I lived in Kenya and East Africa and you see all the tribal differences and you come home and you say we can't be like that. Right. We cannot be like that. We have, we have incredible struggles. We have serious struggles in policing mm -hmm. and injustice and I oversee the Newcastle County Police, second largest police department in the state. We're doing creative things just uh, 
two weeks ago, we brought in some of the individuals that led the protests to be involved in training our new members of the academy. Excellent. So police officers can understand. It's key that there's understanding yes. across the divides in our community. And if you want a leader who's going to continue to lead in that way, I would really appreciate your support. Matt, I thank you so very much and sincerely thank you. A friend, a friend, a friend. Thank you. Uh, let's get prepare ourselves for the next segment. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed, but wait, there's more. Check out this week's scoop. And we're back. Well, you may be saying, what in the world is going on on the cup of coffee with Dr. Curry? What I decided to do, instead of having two or three politicians today, I wanted to pull in the, the crew that really, really make us look good. We have a brand new brother, Brother uh, Anthony uh, uh, Parker, who is our new media uh, 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 manager, the person in charge of our media, and he's really taking us to great levels. And I, I can't even stay formal when I'm around this guy. He's a graduate of Lincoln University, one of our HBCs. CUs, as you all know, the oldest and the greatest and the best, mm -hmm. but he's just a full of energy, and I wanted you all to get a chance to see who they are, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Brother Anthony Parker. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, please just call me Parker, but I am excited to be here today. I'm also excited to be on this very special episode with County Exec Matt Meyer, but more so, I'm excited to be with you guys today again. Uh, real quick about myself, my name is Anthony Parker Jr. Parker for sure. I am a host, a DJ, a graphic designer, a creative... Mo Come on, man, just hire me. So what is the purpose of hiring you uh -huh. if I'm hired you to be with us? Hire me some more. This, I'm a firm believer of 9 to 5 and 5 to 9. <laughs> 9 to 5, you make your grand dollar, and the 5 to 9 is where you do your fun dollar. Okay. Well, he has all the quotes to cliches and everything else, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy about it. So you've been working for us for about three weeks now. Four weeks. Four weeks. What have you been oh, able wow. to accomplish? <laughs> what have you been able to accomplish? So we've done some great things over here. Um, the first thing I, I really noticed is that for us to really touch the community, for us to touch the members, for us to touch America, we have to have the quality. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, what's the first thing that we can kind of invest in to kind of up our quality? And I thought a great thing was, of course, number one is lights. Mm -hmm. Doing photography, doing anything with media, with cameras, you have to have great lighting. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of you guys back home, you have cell phones. If you put your cell phone in the air and you find that light, that's a great picture. So I wanted to adopt that same mentality for what we're doing behind the scenes. We need light, we need sound, we need cameras. And that's been the main things that we've been focusing on. And kind of now we're just touching up and polishing it. So we're putting a great final touch mm -hmm. on everything that we're putting out and it's great. Well, that speaks to those of you, Isaiah and Fair family members who are paying your tithing and giving in your offerings oh, yeah. because he's spending your money really well. It's not only me. It's not only you. <laughs> <laughs> it appears to be the big, the big ticket items comes from him. <laughs> but, but we really appreciate it. And I want to just have a little fun with some of the, the, the crew. We are one team here at East Iron Fair, and this mm -hmm. is just a joy to have him. And I'm glad that God has sent him our way, and we hope and trust that he continue to do great things and be a great person. But I want to give one more thing. It really mesmerized when he came to his interview. Something happened that was really interesting, and I want to tell the world. He I'm showed listening. up in a big pink Cadillac. <laughs> I said, what in the world am I getting myself into? <laughs> he showed up, pulled up behind my car with a big <laughs> pink Cadillac. Yes, I said, sir. am I getting a pimp or what? <laughs> Help me to understand so, that. So my mom, a lot of you guys probably know her, Coco Parker. She sells uh, Mary Kay on the East Coast. She's really huge. She's been earning cars. She's been doing sales. She's been building up her team. And I was like, yo, let me spin your car for this interview. <laughs> this is way before I had my little Buick. Um, but I spent her car and I got the job, so 
Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you so very much, Parker. Yes, you have a, he's a lot of fun. He's been around. Um, uh, uh, he's a part of the HBCU system, and he's been mm -hmm. with us for the last month. And I'm delighted to have him here, and I hope this is going to be a relationship that will last for a lifetime. Yes, sir. So, again, Brother Parker, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, we we, get, we get here one of these. I we can't give you the shake. I no, no, it. we're not going to shake. Uh. I got to go home to my baby <laughs> and my, my wife, so I don't want to get no shaking. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. This is my show. <laughs> Hello, this is Justin welcoming you to join Justin. Don't forget, every Sunday we're here from 2.30 to 3. We'd love you to uh, watch and pay attention and join our platform, join our team. Join Justin today. Thank you. Sundays, 2.30 to 3. And we're back. After having Crazy Parker, now I have the other pro power behind the scene, and that is none other than Kendra Murray. She's a graduate of Savannah State University, another HBCU, and I'm very hot, happy and proud. She's been with us for a year or two at this point, and she's been a phenomenal force in doing some great things at East Iron Fish. She's a little bit more serious, but she's a, she's a, a bundle of fun as well, and I'm excited about her being here. So, Kendra, with all that you do, new braids new braces <laughs> new everything tell me a little bit about Kendra okay so a little bit about me um, this is not nothing the within the content industry not anything new um, right out of high school I had plans on going straight into the military so that was my plan a um, God kind of shifted shifted the plans around <laughs> I never been to Georgia before so I was supposed to go to Shaw University another HBCU um, but I didn't want to be around a bunch of family out in there. No offense, <laughs> but um, never been to Georgia. So Savannah was actually the first part of Georgia that I've been to. That was my first, my first visit. I fell in love with the culture of Savannah, the culture of Georgia, and the whole HBC. It just felt it felt like home to me. So Savannah State, it was. Within that, I got into all aspects of media. I got family mem family members that come from all types of music backgrounds. So that's kind of where I got the the drive from. And from then, it's just been content. I just have a passion for it. I love it. If it doesn't feel like a job, then... Oh, working for Dr. Curry feels like a job. <laughs> Let me assure you of that. Well, it was something you said, you know, in the midst of you sharing your life story. Mm -hmm. You said, God shift. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you, mm -hmm. aren't we saved today? <laughs> Praise our God. She said, God shift. I mean, she said it with such power and authority. And the whole trajectory of her life went from where she wanted to go mm -hmm. to the way God wanted to go. And we are very appreciative for that, um, Kendra. Um, I also um, am happy because you have been with us. I get how long have you been with us, by the way? Um, two, years. two years. Two years. So for the last two years, you have done some amazing things here at the, at the, at the East Zion Fair. You have helped us in many different ways. Some of the basic things that, that I should have known to do, you were able to come in and make it happen without any question. Um, Kendra, um, help me to understand why you have such a strong fetish for sneaks. <laughs> I mean, uh, but before you answer, <laughs> no, I got more to say. Why is it that you know all the apps to get them on sale? You know, look at these sneaks she got on the day. I, I think they are not as pretty as some of the other ones you wear. But she comes in. If we were to start a sneak collection, she would be in charge of that area. Help me understand about this whole sneak thing. Um. Okay. So sne I've been wearing sneakers since. I had my own job. Uh, even, bef even before that, I always loved Jordans. To me, every Jordan, if this is a little fun fact, every Jordan has a story behind it. So every, from, well, the OG series, they all have OG series, the original series, they all have stories behind it. So after reading the history of each Jordan, that's why Jordan 1s are my favorite. Jordan 1s and Jordan 8s, mm. they're like my favorite. Um, just reading the history behind each Jordan and just reading like each accomplishment that goes with each Jordan that he released. So I bought every Jordan that I like and these particularly that y'all just saw a uh, little history behind that. Virgil, he is the first black creative director of Louis Vuitton. So he made these collab with Nike. So wow. I had to grab them. Yeah. Wow. I like sneakers. She said a lot about <laughs> Jordan, who happens to be my frat brother. I just want you to know he's happily married, so stop trying to follow him, and, oh and, and no. you're probably you know, <laughs> trying to find a way. But I also want to share as a fun fact that Kendra is um, not married. 
So for those of you who are looking for a college-educated, uh, sophisticated or young lady who um, can help mm -hmm. augment your life, mm -hmm. I give her to you. I will counsel and marry y'all. So you find out wh whether you call us to hear it. No, don't do that. Just, let me just stop. I don't want that to definitely happen. But she is a beautiful person. I'm very happy to have her with us. We wanted to have a little bit of fun in this segment, these last two segments, so that you get a chance to see the powers that are behind the scene. And the powers behind the scene are just amazing. We're doing some amazing things. We're having fun. They're bringing out the Chris out of Dr. Curry. And that's important as we move forward. They're bringing out the Chris out of the Pastor Curry. That's important. So I hope and trust that you enjoyed this time together. Until the next time we get together, let's stay after it. Let's get after it. No, that's my role. <laughs> you, you do your role. My role is <laughs> let's stay after it, get after it. Okay. Talk to you later. God bless you. <laughs>
enough for your love, baby. Never get enough for your love.
got today. Who believes it? Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? Honk them horns. Come on, lad.
Jesus is so good. Oh my God. Where would we be without him, y'all? Where would we be without him? If you know that God cannot fail you, I need y'all to put y'all, roll, roll y'all windows down. I need y'all to stick y'all arms out. And I need to, I, I need you to give God some praise right now. Wave those hands. Oh my God, I'm going to try to sing this, y'all. But I can't get past that God cannot fail us. Oh my God. saints let's praise the lord together come on let's worship the lord together let's adore him let's worship him he is worthy to be praised jesus you're the best thing that has ever happened to me come on let's celebrate don't get tired on the lord he's a great gracious god to him be the glory to him be the honor and to him be the praise praise god from whom all blessings flow. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's again that we come, the last watch of the day. You've been faithful all day long. And for that, God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and God, we give you glory. Father, now as we dive into the word of God, we pray, God, you will strengthen us. Father, bless some person who's listening right now, who needs a word from you. Father, answer their questions, soothe their minds, and bless their lives. And we promise you, God, when this message is over, we'll take no credit, for all credit belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go with us real quickly and briefly to the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 4. Psalms 39 and verse 4. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Lord, 
Remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. For just a few moments, I want to talk from the thought, living life unafraid. Come on, look at somebody real quickly and say, neighbor, you've got to live your life unafraid. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord together, everybody. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes 3, 3, King Solomon declared that there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. A time to live and a time to die. My brothers and sisters, all of us are experiencing this time to live. But as sure as you are living, there is a time to die. As a matter of fact, according to the National World Database on Death, one out of every one person dies, which means everybody who is born will die, which means also that all of humanity, including you and I, we're born with a death date. But the date of our death should not be our focal point. What should be the focal point is the time that we are alive, the time that we are here, and what we're doing with the time that God has blessed us with. Because, my brothers and sisters, the good news is that all of humanity, when, it's, it's, they, have, when they have given their lives to Jesus Christ, their lives are ultimately in the hands of God. And whenever your life is in the hand of God, your whole purpose is to ensure that he is pleased with your life. Do I have a witness in here? Which really commands us on this day to act now and to live unafraid. It's important that we live without fear. Whatever the Lord has assigned to your life, you have to go and do it. You cannot wait for people. You cannot hope and pray and trust that one of these old days, it's going to come to pass. You have to get out and make it happen. The Apostle James reminds us in James 4 and 14 that we do not know what our lives will be like tomorrow because life is for a little while. And then that life, vanishes quickly meaning our life is only for a short season during a certain period of time and then it's snatched away so whatever we are assigned to do we've got to move on it with all of our might power and strength which is truly the testimony of the text that we've tagged to teach on this afternoon here we find the psalmist in a deep meditation. He's saying to the Lord, remind me of how brief my time on earth is. Remind me that my days are numbered and my life is quickly passing away. As the psalmist is surveying the scenes of his life, he's preparing himself to move with purpose to pursue God's plan for his life. So as a reinforcement, he was pleading with God to keep him mindful, to keep him mindful of life's swift transitions. So he would work every day as if it was his last day. Music